now 94. 94 years old, and you were you grew up pretty close to where she grew up, right? Yes. Uh, what was your was your area township called? What was it called? Blumenau. Okay. And uh, that is a, that is a village. Okay, yes. village. Yes, that's a village. Yes. And what did your dad do for a living? I lost my dad when I was nine years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was a farmer. Okay. And I inherited the farm. My mother was able to keep the farm going. Okay. She kept it going in order to, for me to take over, but it did not come that way. Did you have any brothers or sisters? I have a sister. Oh, uh, Mitchell Road. Mm -hmm. She yes. knows you. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what's her name? Her name? Yeah, your sister's name. Gertrude Block. Gertrude Block, okay. And um, so you were the, the two of you growing up. Mm hmm And um, did you go to school there? It was your school and high school? Yeah, she went to high school and I just, I just went to a, a grade yeah. school. Okay. And during that time period, I know we were talking to her and I talked to Ozzy about, you know, the Boy Scouts, the, the Hitler Youth at the time. Were you part of that too? Did you have to be? Hitler Jugend? Yeah. Yes, we all had to. Yeah. Even when I made my citizenship, I was being asked for, by, from the, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, have you been in, 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 in the Hitler Jugend? Yeah. I say yes. Have you carried the flag? I said no. But you have, and then he stopped, stopped the German. He said, you threw Heil, Heil. I said yes, we all did. Yeah. Part of being, part of the school. Yes. Yeah. As part of that Hitler Youth programming, was it academic as well as athletic? Was it everything? Yes, both. Actually, both. Uh, athletic, mainly athletic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you find uh, that, uh, I know Ozzy talked about at a certain point in the Hitler Youth, you know, it's just, you could not carry any guns. There was no armed training. And then at a certain age, there was at least armed training. Was, was that, did you notice that at all? Arms training? Uh, car, using guns. No. No. No, not not at least in the age of my no. No, because that was I read that in some place you talked about it. No, absolutely not. Did your mother talk at all about what it was like to be uh, during that time period? This is you know 1932. Hitler goes into government. He's the becomes the first. Chancellor. Did my mother talked about yeah, it? Here. Anybody in your family talk about oh, it? Yeah, you bet. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> my mother when my dad died when I, like I said, when I was 90 years old. Uh, I do remember one incident. My mother went to town and I was with her and bought some leather goods or wanted to buy some leather goods. The store was owned by a Jew. Mm -hmm. I still should remember the name, but I can't come. And then he said, the Jew said, Mrs. Grunert, how do you dare to come here? And my mother said, why, what, what's, what's going on? Well, haven't you heard? What, says my mother. Well, that was the night was a... The, the, the Persona. Yes. And then my mother said, why did they do that? She knows. And then the Jewish fellow said, I don't know. Yeah. And then when my mother left there, he said, that, that Jew said, Mrs. Grunert, you probably be, wa be watched. I have nothing done wrong, she said. I don't need to. That was... Yes. That was when I was nine years old, or ten years old, maybe. That was my first. 
Wow. Well, actually, my first one was. <laughs> I so I don't think that belongs here. Yeah, oh, go ahead. It's for, it's for your family. Well, you can cut it out. I'll cut out when I was a, a kid, uh, my, my dad, of course, lived. I was maybe seven or eight years old. <clears throat> a Jewish fella came just like it. This is before, uh, well, he, it was already in the time. Uh, we called him the chicken Jew. He used, used to buy chickens and butcher them, and that was it. That was a, my mother liked it, and so did he. And uh, then he said that those chickens have to be butchered the kosher way. Uh. <laughs> oh, okay. So he took the chickens in the bag and went. There was a room next next to the chicken coop where the windows were high and so and so. You couldn't look in. And I asked my mother, I said, Mom, what is that kosher? Well, she said, why don't you ask him? I mean, seven year old, eight <laughs> or whatever. It's, I think, no. But there was a, a stair from the outside going up there, and I knew exactly there was a knot hole in that one. And about three or four steps up there, I looked through the knot hole, and I could watch, watch a Jew taking out this, this is, uh, um, steel, you know, to sharpen his knife. Yeah, he yeah. sharpened the knife. And all of a sudden, I whether I did or whatever it is, made the noise of us, he went out that door. And I looked around, I couldn't see him anymore. While I was still perching, all of a sudden the door opened from the back with his right hand, his knife, and his left hand, his steel. And when I saw that, I up and up, up in the attic, in the chicken, in the, in the we had a pigeon loft there. I would coordinate myself in that pigeon loft until I saw him going up the street. <laughs> you never I, knew what kosher meant. <laughs> and then I, I said, this story doesn't belong in here. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's a great story. Yes. It's a great, great story. So, uh, you, did you, was your dad in, in World War One? Yes. What was his role in World War One? What, was what did he do? Was he a uh, military or army? In the uh, military, army. yeah. He was in the, uh, in, in the, towards Hungary there, what, what other mountains? Carpathian. Ca Carpathian mountains, yeah. He fought all four years long there. Ah. Huh. The Russians, yeah. of course. And did he talk at all about, do you remember him talking about the Kaiser or Ludendorff or Hindenburg? Not about so much, but about the war when he and <clears throat> his brothers played, uh, played cards of us. Then, of course, they, they talk, talked to each other. They were all soldiers. And then I, as a kid, I just... <laughs> of course. Yeah. Not so much about the Kaiser at... Uh, uh, just war in general. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because Hindenburg was the uh, top general. Oh, yeah. He was and then Ludendorff. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, he was a good one. And so as Hitler is coming to power, and in your small village, do you get to see any incidences of change? Any German. I think I, think I was too young in, in yeah. those years. Uh, yes. That was Hitler came to power in 33 in January 33, and I was born in December 27, so, so I was uh, late, five years old, yes. I didn't even go to school then, no. I, I cannot recollect any, anything of that. Did, uh, so at some point as the war is progressing, how are you learning about it? Do you have a radio as well? What do you mean, the First World War or the Second, second World War? The Second World War. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we had a radio. In fact, I, I, I had a radio I could listen to, to the uh, uh, not German stations. Ah. Yes. 
what was if I would be caught that would not been good Do you listen to BBC and I don't know no I think it's it, it came from I think it came from Russia okay Moscow okay Radio Moscow Radio yeah Moscow and yes. it was in German yes okay so it's in German so you're listening to what the Russians are saying yes about what really? Bo 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 said. oh yeah and but that was not a that was a uh, the old type where you have to fiddle with a stone I don't know if you're familiar with <laughs> and then sometimes you all of a sudden you got a clear voice and you, then you okay so you have a headset you're listening yes oh man so you're getting the other side of the story and then in addition listening to Hitler and Goebbels and and uh, the, the the German politics yes yeah uh, were you confused I mean you're you're a young boy you're listening to Moscow and then you're listening to Berlin well <sighs> what do you call confused you will listen to both of them and with, with nine or ten years you were have other ideas than then making up your mind about about uh, uh, politics there was no politics in me yeah neither in my mo mother, mother. And, and she was more concerned about the chicken and, uh, and than anything else than about Hitler's politics. No. So, how did it affect you personally? You, you're there now. It, as you get towards the end of the war, uh, you are 17 years old or 18 years old. Well, I was. I turned 17 in December and in January. We left home, yes. I was deferred from the German army because I was not heavy enough. I was only 90 pounds. Oh my gosh. And uh, this is 90 German pounds, a little bit more than that. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know if I should. Just go into that all. That hurts. Well, again, we're kind of doing this for your family. Um, so from there, did, did you, was there a point where you said, let's get out of here? That was not our decisions. You had to go. You had we, to we were not allowed to go until. Yes. Oh, the ball lighter said. Yep. Until that, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes, you, you I, had, I had a wagon with horse, for horses. I had a wagon with a little thing. At the, um, and, and was it ready to go, yes. And the next morning... And you got you went with a slave. What? Slave. With a Schlitten. You went with a Schlitten. Oh, yeah. And, uh, that was afterwards. We went with a, a wagon first. And about four miles from away from home, uh, there was a big uh, field actually an athletic field where there hundreds and hundreds of wagons were uh, the roads was plugged mm. that was and all of a sudden four Russian planes came circled over it, placed themselves in four places and every time one of them came down from the sun fired not just machine gun, but also they had uh, what they call the splitter bombs, as a sliver bombs. Sliver bomb, yeah. They would explode as soon as they hit the, uh, the ground, and therefore anybody that is, was there in the close, they wouldn't go in the ground, but they, they uh, hit the ground and then they got so. And so they, they, those four planes always circled. So at there was always under fire, whatever there was down there. Just all of a sudden, they disappeared, disappeared to the east. And it didn't take more than about a minute and two German fighter planes came over. But they must have known that and left, yeah. Wow. But then your wagon was gone. What? Huh? But your wagon was hit. Yeah, my wagon was hit. Really? But just, just a, uh, 
Oh, as I as we were under the attack, there was close by there was a, uh, a gravel pit, and I thought safe in the gravel pit, and I went in the gravel pit, not realizing that that was completely snowed in. It was winter, you know. Yeah, yeah. Snowed in, and as I tried to get out with my horses afterwards, the tongue broke, and I couldn't leave it anymore. So I unhitched the horses and went to the next neighbor waited till it was dark again and went home and and got a sled because it is what sure. it was beautiful with the sled i went back next morning my mother and and uh, they left i was all by myself a german soldier saw me as i was trying to to uh, change the goods and he said take only food for yourself and food for the horses, he said. Leave everything there. Leave. Tomorrow the Russians will come. So that's what I did. Then I, can I insert something? Sure. Something that uh, I did not see, but I, I was being told. Our church was there were two villages in that church was one was Blumenau like we said and the other one was in Venegitten in Venegitten in the other there was a a church Ingrid with a steeple a br wooden church that had a had the any, uh, it was 400 years old, that yeah, church. Okay, and I, this is a story I've been told. I didn't see it then. And the second day when the Russians took that village, they celebrated. They had vodka, they had women, they had, they just celebrated. And the commander, the, the unit that, that was in there, was half uh, European Russian and half uh, Eastern Mongolian. Right. And the, the uh, commander was a Mongolian. Hold on, I'll build it from the Kyrgyzstan. Ah, that's nice. The commander was a Mongolian. And as he looked around, he said to somebody, what that building with that steeple on there? He said, is that, is, is that the church? Yes, that's the church. He said, if there is a church, there must be a priest there too. Yes, there is a priest. There is a priest. I've never seen a priest in my life. He said, go and fetch him. Go and bring him. He ordered a couple of soldiers or what. And pretty soon they came with our priest. He was he was ready for retirement long time already, but during the war he had to keep on. And one soldier on one side and the other one on the other side and had him in the middle. And we brought him to that to that commander. And he says, is that the priest? Yes, it's the priest. What is he good for? What is that old man good for, he said. Shoot him. Anybody volunteers? No, there was no volunteer. Well, he said, and I unbuckled his pistol or revolvers. They all had revolvers and start unbuckling, and then a young Russian soldier lifts his hands, he says, I'll take it. Okay, so he, that young Russian took the priest, went out in the tool shed, close by, took his, his submachine gun, and fired one salvo in one side, and the other one on the other side, and then he went to the priest and says, leave. He says, not all Russians are like our commander. Oh, wow. Leave, he said. 
So he opens the door and left. That soldier again went back in, saluted. Well done, my son, said that, that uh, uh, commander. Give him, an, give him a reward. Give him a bottle of vodka. And so we got a bottle of vodka for that. That soldier, that Russian soldier, risked his life and then some. Yes, yes he did. Yes. That's it. That, thank you for sharing that story. That story. So now you're on the you're on you've got your sled now. Yes. You got your sled and you're hooked up your oh, horses yeah. to the sled. Yes, we we unloaded from the wagon and the sled, whatever it was, okay. And I could go with the sled. The 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 roads were plugged for wagons and wagons and wagons. I could go with my sled on the side. <laughs> you know, that yeah. was sometimes had to go through fences or so, but at that time, I still had three horses. No, at that time, I had only two horses left. left. Uh, and I knew my mother was going ahead. And by God's grace, I found her again. My word. My mother and my sister, yes. I found them again. They were, we split before that. And the next day, we got fall. And I could see my sled would not <laughs> do very well. And there on, on one farm, I saw a wagon sitting there. And I asked the man that I said, could, would you give me that wagon? He said, take it. The Russian lake are here tomorrow, he said, take it. So I loaded again everything in my wagon, and we went on west. But he was not alone on the uh, him no. what you had on the wagon. We had, we had a, a lady with four or five kids from, from farther east already, and my mother, and we had a foster kid they all were on the wagon, and my sister, Gertrude, mm -hmm. uh, didn't have room anymore. So she got off and walked by foot all to the, t uh, to the front of the uh, wagon. No, oh, there was maybe 10 or 12 wagons. And as we get through this little city, all of a sudden before before I got over a railroad crossing, the gates came down. I had to wait, and they didn't realize or knew what happened until the train was by again. That's the way we lost my sister. Really? Yes. You lost her? We lost her. She went ahead. She, ahead she was ahead of us, yeah. did not realize that at there was uh, the, uh, the gates down there that we could not make it. So they kept on going, and afterwards there was no finding it. That night I tried to find her and I couldn't. Well, <coughs> oh, scared you must have been. Of course it is. It's war. It is war. It was war. Did you sense the Russians behind you? Could you hear them? Oh, yeah. If you sense them? Could you, could you hear them? Could you oh, sure. sense the Russians were coming? Yeah. You better believe it. <laughs> yeah. You not just could hear them, you could see them. The artillery going, going in the city and exploding, yes. You, you could, you could. I, I pedaled back a little bit. Then the war started. We were close enough to the to the Russian border that we could hear the artillery shooting mm. very clear. On the twenty-first of June. And then it was got quieter and quieter, and then we couldn't hear nothing anymore. I mean, no shooting anymore. That was nineteen thirty-nine, and this was in nineteen forty-five again. All of a sudden, it started again. You hear rumbling, rumbling, closer, 
uh, came closer. You could hear the, the single shots already from the artillery. You could hear it. And that was the day before they would come and run over our village. That's the day before we left before that, yes. Wow. Wow. Uh, so you're literally, literally one day ahead of the Russians. Yes. In oh. fact, in fact, there was <laughs> when we left. When we left in the morning, there was a German uh, artillery unit that shot towards the east. And I, I asked a soldier, I said, "How far are you shooting?" He says, six kilometers." So that is that's the way as the front was away then when we left. Actually, he said, six kilometers. We shouldn't. Okay. Well, we still have. Now we've we've missed. We've lost Gertrude. Yes. Ah, how about we, uh, we lost her? Yes. How, how, when did you catch up with her? Oh yeah. Never. Three years later. What? When we catch up later. or what? <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Oh, she yeah. she was gone. Yeah. So you, so right? You didn't catch up with her right? But you literally gone. No, uh, no. Uh, Tell him then after. Uh, a year after after the no. war was over, we found through through a she she left it in East Germany. She was left in East Germany, run over by the Russians, and we we were lucky enough to be far enough towards the west. At we were British occupied. Right. Yeah. But tell him. Uh, Experience in West Germany there, in uh, West Russia, with, uh, with Russia. That was? What did you in the SS stecken Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Might as well. Might oh, as well. yes, that's it. That I think that's important. And I don't know. In, in Pommern. Nee, that's one of them. In Danzig, you know, Dansk. you have any idea? Dansk? Dansk. Dansk, yeah. Dansk yes. We left through an all in a, in a village before that one. There was a, a little town square with a big water pump on it. And I was trying to get water for the horses and for myself. And two Hitler youth came in their uniform, asked for ad me for ID. Well, I had actually nothing to hide because I was deferred, but I was only deferred until February the 11th, and this was the 13th or the 14th now. So I showed them that they both them. Okay, come with me. No. I say, where are we going? He says, up, up on the, uh, the Rathaus, up on the... Uh, okay. So we went up there and uh, I made Heil Hitler and left again. And here was a, a, a German officer asked me for identifications. I had them. I had them. And he said, I wrote something and gave me a slip. He said, now, now you are a member of the SS. Golly. <laughs> I was, you know, how that, like, uh, like hit with a hammer. And I took that little slip, I wish I would have it, I don't have it anymore, stuck in my pocket and was going to go and tell my mother before I was to retire, halt, stop, you cannot leave this room anymore. I said, my mother is looking for me, she does not know who. No, you are in the SS, and the transport will go tomorrow to Breslau. And Breslau was an, an uh, almost an, an encircled city. 
So I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, like an angel, my mother came in. She says, what are you doing here? Well, and I shortly explained the tour. I said, I can't leave anymore. Well, she says, and then she went to that officer. He was a major, major in the German army. And she says, I have a, 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 a lady with four children on my wagon. I have a foster boy on his wagon. His father died in Russia, he says, fighting. And from the lady and the four children, her husband is fighting in Russia. I cannot manage to go alone with that wagon. And then that officer that said, well, you go to somebody, I don't know, so-so, and tell him to get yourself into the Volkssturm. I don't know if you thought that was actually a, not the military, uh, mm -hmm. as a uh, uh, half military outfit. And take your son and have him registered in there or uh, and then come back. And so she did. And that, then he left me. He, he said, you can go now, but whenever you, on your final destination, you register again to the military. And it, it, so I went back, and for the next six, seven weeks, we traveled. Mm, other things there. Anyway, when I came to my destination, I, I was too busy, too, too fast. To, a few days afterwards, and then I gave my my via pass, uh, the military. I gave him there. I got that one back after the war was over. So that that went okay. Yeah, his mother saved his life. That's yes. That is incredible. That's an incredible story. And you yeah. were an SS for a day. <laughs> for the, about one hour. One hour, you were an SS. For. And your mother saved the day, honestly. Yeah, guys. yeah. That was. Wow. I'm glad you shared that story. Well, yeah, I that's think remarkable. so. That's remarkable. Then I, that was in March when we, when we uh, uh, arrived in. Holstein. In Holstein. Is that known to you? Uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, close to Lübeck. And in March, that was the 27th of March, I think, yeah. yeah. The weather was nice. I, we, we were with a farmer uh, and I worked for the help right out there. Uh, that time, you hear the planes here and there and there and there. But anyway, Two days before the war was over, and was, that was in May, I think it was in 8th or, yeah, eight or May. two days before the war was over, I dragged a field <laughs> ready for seeding. You know what a drag oh, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. had three horses on there. I was walking on the right side and went up there. I heard a plane. Well, there was many planes at that time. But all of a sudden I heard, I had already uh, what uh, turned plane down and decelerated, you know. And I thought, what is it? Now, Holstein, Schleswig Holstein, Liebig, they have those, those bushes around the field. They call them Knicks. Knicks, they call it, yeah. The, they are, uh, because they had high winds, so they had all, they were about 15 feet high or 20 feet high or whatever. And all of a sudden, I seen them coming over then, bing, 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 bing. and the line of, sh I saw the bullets hitting the, 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 the ground because it was dry and every time a bullet hit, yes. a little puffed off. And that was almost my line. 
I was, I could see him. No, that, that, at that time I could not see him as a pilot because he was too high. And then he pulled up again, turned. Oh, I think I thought he was going to go back to Britain, you know. But after quite a while, all of a sudden I hear again decelerating. And I thought, you so and so, you come back. And I took my whip and jacked the horses right in the bushes. And sure enough, came right over there again, was looking. I could see him from the side. Oh my God. <laughs> the, the British, you know, I this, could see him. So this was a British strafe, strafing, strafing a German farm. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, wow. And he pulled up again while I was still in the bushes there and uh, turned and then he left. And then I was making sure that he had left. I had to unhitch my, my drags because they, do, they can't go backwards. Each yeah. one circle, dragging backwards out of the, and get the horses out of the bushes <laughs> and get home. That was two days before the war was over, and I was clearly on the field and not in artillery or, or anything. I was clearly on the field with three horses. That's um, another amazing story. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's yes, another amazing story. story. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't even... But you know what, when we saw now from Ukraine, those refugees. Oh, gosh. That brings it Comes all back, back, comes back again. Oh, my. Really. Well, and that's, that's what you were. You were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Refugees. A refugee, yeah. yes. Yeah. Life was cheap in those days. Now, you probably wonder how he came here to this country. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Through his sister. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. My sister, I think, I think you know that story anyway from my sister. No. 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 She got, uh, finally after a year or so, we found sister my sister again, close. you know. And then she came from East Germany. That was not all that easy at that time. But she got an exit visa from East Germany and came into the West Germany. Yes. And as she came, he uh, was looking for a job, and, and uh, the Burgermeister in, in, in that, or, uh, in that uh, village was looking for help, so she was hired. And his son, was Hans Block. Are you familiar with Hans Block? No. No. no? Oh. oh, that is another story again. <laughs> you want to you want to hear it? Sure. Oh. You got my attention. <laughs> the Blocks, Adolf Block, Adolf Block, no death. And his wife uh Right after the First World War, or shortly after the First World War, uh, opened up the paper and uh, found somewhere uh, a farmer uh, is looking for help in, in, in Jamestown, New York. <laughs> so that was, that farmer was a Cheney, yeah, Cheney. Yeah, Cheney farm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or since it was next one, eh? I don't know. No, I think it was. It doesn't matter anyway. So they decided to migrate to America. This is, uh, and as I came here, they, I think it was 1925. 25. They were born in 25, Hans Block. As Hans Block was born, and his sister, and his he and Jameson. He was born in Jamestown, New York. And at that time, they had 
the a bad recession here. Mm -hmm. And they decided to go back to Germany again with the kids. Now the kids had already, I think, one six, seven years old. Yeah. One a year schooling in that in that house here close by in the schoolhouse. Okay. So they went back to Germany and they had German school schooling and so on and so forth. And the war was going on then, and Hans was 18 and was drafted in the German army. Mm -hmm. And when the war was over, there are more things. The American officer that took the war, uh, the, he said, you were born in... in Jamestown, New York, yes. How come are you fighting in the German army? Well, and then he told the story. And then Hans had a chance to get repatriated. What she did, he got his American citizenship back. He came back here to, to uh, America again, only to be drafted. In the, Amer in the American army, and uh, he he spent time in Washington, the state of Washington. We, what city I was it? It doesn't matter. And when he was in the main, oh, I think. He had he was acquainted with my sister before he left Germany, so they they wrote each other, and when he was discharged from the army, from the American army now, discharged, he worked, he came back here to Jamestown and worked at the children's home, yeah, Gustav Adolphus Children's Home, yeah. and he was able to make an, an uh, affidavit or whatever you call it for my sister and she came over, they got married and a year later or a couple of years later I came over wow. because my sister was here. So what year would that have been when you came here? Pardon? What year did you come to the United States? In December 23 and 51, yeah. Well, then you're here. Then I'm here, yes. Now, how did you get the lander, Pennsylvania? Now, just a second. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Now, is there of the Hans Block has his farm. Yes. Oh, okay. Hans Block at the farm. There's a farm yeah, land well, and land, and I came he's there. Gone yeah. Now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. His son has it. Okay. Yes. And so then you meet her, or she meets you. Oh, I mean, <laughs> well, my, uh, my sister and Ingrid went to the same school. Yeah. And uh, somehow she got known the address because, in, first of all, her brother lived in Canada, in Ontario. It's only uh, four or five hours from here. She went to visit her brother, and at that one she came and visited her classmate, which is my sister. And then I met, <laughs> and since I was a good-looking young... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I hope I'm not in there. No, no you course, know course. enough from us. <laughs> I hope we hear from you a little bit. So that's uh, so. That's how you met. Yes, how we met. And then she chased you. <laughs> yes, she chased me. <laughs> oh, and then okay. I went, went to Germany. Huh? Uh, then I went because to Germany. Because we met in Germany. And she still looked as good as she did before. Ah no. <laughs> so she. So we. Doesn't move that fast anymore. So we got decided to get married, and we got married in Germany. Yes. 
Where? Where in Germany? Oh God, that was Siegen. Yeah. Okay. Siegen, Germany. Yeah. I think I I think I talked <laughs> enough <doing> now. <laughs> You're terrific. This is terrific. I think I talked enough. Too much already. Do, do you ever do you, just to be and, and as we just crawl end at the end of this, um, do do you reflect like Ingrid did? And your life's journey. I mean, think about where you were. Oh, yeah. Uh, I pedal back a little bit. I actually learned the trade of machinist in Germany. Okay. So uh, when I came here, uh, my first job was uh, for farm machinery, uh, fixing farm machineries. And th that didn't work. Oh, yeah, that was a time when, when there was layoffs. And uh, Mr. Anderson, I like him, God bless him, uh, told me that you were the last one to be hired. You must have to lay you off. Okay. Huh. I, I was, of course, I was single. I could use a few weeks of vacation. The first. I think it was the second time where I went for, for uh, you know, when you're unemployed, you went for it. The guy looked at me, he says, what do you, buy? what are you about trade? And I say, mechanic, do you know how to weld? I said, yes. Well, Hope's Windows is looking for a welder. Here, you go and weld. Okay. So I did go and I worked for about a year at Hope's Windows welding steel windows. And that was hard. Mm, it's not the welding, but the handling you know, yeah, the steel yeah, windows. Yeah. That was hard. And I decided, I decided that was it. And I was looking for another job. And uh, Web and Nap were looking for somebody in the tool room. And I did hired on that web on nap and stayed there for 35 years, yes. Good for you. It was a good company. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're remarkable. Your wife's remarkable. Uh, I wish I wish you wouldn't tell anybody about this. We'll keep it a secret. In case if Ozzy calls though, I'll tell him we talk. You can't tell them that story from what I told you from that the, the commander from that that uh, war. With the priest. That, but I still have a letter from the from my priest. He wrote in it. He said, "My fate was decided within minutes." Then he said, "Shoot him!" You know. Yeah, that's that's remarkable. And that priest later on in West Germany had a call for a dying person took his his uh, monstrance and whatever was going to go at the evening at 10 o'clock got run over by a British jeep and died Oh, no. And the jeep never stopped. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Okay. Well, I can't thank both of you enough. I want to take a picture of the two of you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. This is, this is <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs>